Hello and welcome back to City Skylines 2, where we are building the sort of realistic North American themed metropolitan area of Riverview, featuring a couple of major cities, lots of rural farmland, suburbs and everything in between. In the most recent episode, we focused on some major infrastructure developments, uh, among others this big cloverly thingy with some added complexity. Uh, this new major interchange here near downtown to enable for easy access to the port of Riverview as well as some of the southern uh, areas of uh, the inner city. Uh, but the biggest change was of course establishing a third outside connection to the east and dragging this interstate all the way into this northeastern corridor. Uh, connecting up the city and much of the suburban sprawl and rural farmland of, uh, of this area. In today's episode we are probably gonna do one of the most comprehensive changes to the city in the series so far as I'm getting inspired by a suggestion that is starting to slowly pop up more and more from you guys comments and that is to add a proper port uh, or industrial harbor basically to the city. We've already got Eastport and Port of Riverview, but as most of you will know, there are non-functional ports because I don't have outside waterway connections. Uh, but we can, in fact, actually add them to, uh, to this map. So what I'm thinking is that we're going to create a truly massive port in the northern part of the metro area. And hopefully we'll be able to also implement the container cargo shipping terminal, even though it's a, it's a gigantic asset. So this is going to require an immense amount of terraforming and key wall building and lots of complex infrastructure so that we can feed all the cargo traffic from out here. Uh, to the rest of the city and if things go according to plan which they almost never do but we'll try anyways uh, then i'm hopeful that we can concentrate so many industrial workplaces up here that we'll be able to uh, actually dezone some of the industry here in port of riverview and instead rezone it for commercial and residential modern high-rise developments which i think would be pretty cool because that's a very common theme for like uh, older uh, industrial inner harbors uh, in, in major cities that uh, due to the location, the proximity to downtown and cool cultural institution and hipster streets and expensive coffee, uh, they generally get upzoned to uh, overly expensive residential com uh, condos and office developments, uh, which would be really cool if we could do the same here in, in Port of Riverview so that we'll have a, a mix of some of the industry that still holds out basically, uh, and then these new types of developments uh, mixed in. But beforehand, remind you to give this video uh, a like if you enjoy my content and consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on future content. The majority of my viewers aren't actually subscribed so maybe you've just forgotten to. Thanks in advance. I think a good way for us to start out is just to get a sense of the scale of things. I'm going to have to unlock uh, a bunch of tiles up here because I kind of know the area that we'll be working in. It's going to be in 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 this this area here where the main river cutting from the north makes this bend. I think this, uh, this bend here it lends itself quite well to build a big port here. I'm obviously gonna have to kind of reroute this interstate completely so that it goes uh, outside uh, but also build some complex interchanges on and off ramps to ensure connection to the city. Um, I'm also going to have to unlock okay it's, yeah it's just called water <laughs> that's interesting I'm gonna have to unlock uh, that menu because we're gonna need to uh, get a little look at the port we're hoping to implement so it's this cargo harbor here which is, ah, oh, look at the size of this asset. I, I'm not complaining, by the way. I'm very, very happy with the scale of things here in City Skylines 2, but it's pretty much the size of half of downtown. So I'm going to have to kind of pre-plan where to place this just due to the size of it. And I'm thinking it's going to be like in the northern part of the port, uh, something like this. So we're going to have to really terraform quite a bit in this area and create a ton of key walls so that we've also got room for other industry. Uh, at least if we're ever going to achieve uh, a large enough concentration of jobs in, up here to allow us to dezone the port of Riverview, as we discussed in the intro. Uh, we're really gonna have to create a, a couple of thousand jobs up here, I think. Before I do the terraforming, something I need to be careful about is that um, there's quite a bit of a slope on this map. Uh, so 
the areas up north are at quite a bit higher elevation than the southern parts of the map. This is at quite a bit lower elevation, uh, which also means that the the sea level isn't at the at a constant level throughout. So the opening, so to say, for our inner uh, ports, uh, I don't want it to be too wide because that's going to mean that there's going to be um, quite a bit of a visual difference in the key walls in the southern part and the northern part of the of the port. So I'm going to grab the uh, level terrain tool and sort of try and see if I can find a level here on the contour lines that is going to be a constant throughout. Uh, and we'll start up north because this is where the, the water level is the highest and we'll just go as this fourth line I think and just click to kind of mark it then I'm going to drag that south to kind of mark our entrance and I think this is going to be sufficient with the entrance sort of in place I'm going to flatten the entire area here just to make it even and easier to uh, to build with we'll do some terraforming uh, when we're done with the with the port just to ensure that things are looking okay because we're gonna get some pretty steep and hilly terrain up here but for now i'm just gonna flatten everything it's gonna make it a little easier to work with the next step is of course to draw out the roads and i'm going to draw out all the roads inland because it's make, gonna make it much easier for us to create these key walls um, and i'm just gonna grab the cargo harbor again just to check the scale and the alignment and I want to place it uh, somewhere in this region. Uh, so to achieve this, I'm going to start by just having a straight road dragged through the northern uh, end of the of the port here. And then we'll add some piers and some more unique shapes as we uh, map out the wrist. I prefer to use a, a medium sized road because it's pretty wide and that makes the... Um, creation of the key walls easier at least in in theory and i hope i can showcase you guys that i i actually really do feel that it makes the creation of the key walls easier uh, so like i said we'll just have a, a a long straight um piece here so that we can hopefully do some easy alignment of the cargo harbor and then i'm just going to map out the rest with some piers sticking out and some uh, some some more unique shapes as well just to make sure it looks a little interesting So with our basic shape in place now, I'm going to do uh, most of the terraforming inland because it's, like I said, just going to be much easier to create the keys. And if it turns out to be tricky for me, then yeah, this is going to turn awkward real quick. But um, I'm going to find, uh, I'm pretty much just going to go for the, the seabed level here. Then I'm going to go in here, going to mark that and just do the majority of the sort of rough terraforming at first for... Uh, most of this area if you have an issue with water starting to to poke through as you terraform closer and closer uh, then you can save the game and reload the save and it should be fixed but it seems like they've they've worked on improving this because the water seems to disappear rather quickly uh, when i terraform it so um, yeah the game seems to check a little more actively for potential um to check if there's actually if there's actually supposed to be water here just because it's below uh, sea level um, so that's pretty nice for the more um, let's say um, detail oriented terraforming what I try to do is align the uh, the terraforming tool with something on the actual road so in this case it might as well be this double solid yellow line so that if I try to align it uh, as such I'm gonna try and illustrate what I mean then it's going to be easier for me to create the keys because even though it might look like the you know the game is just terraforming uh, alongside the road then it's actually registering just how far in you bring the uh, the terrain underneath the road so when you delete the road to rebuild it as a key um, then if you if you haven't aligned your terraforming you'll have some really wonky edges and that's going to make it much harder to create 
the perfect keys that have 0% elevation. And we'll of course need to remove all the trees, even though it does feel quite wrong. So I'm gonna go for the multiple selection here and then I'm gonna deselect, remove only matching type and then just right click so I can remove everything. And now it's time for a, either the magic trick or my embarrassment. Uh, we'll start with a very small section of road here. We'll delete this part and this is what I meant before with the game actually registering how you terraform underneath the, underneath the roads. And what you'll see here is that it's relatively smooth. It's a little more jagged alongside the edges, but that should be fine. So I'm just going to select the same fall in roads because using a wider road is also just easier for me to make key walls without too much of an incline or decline and we can upgrade these to smaller roads uh, afterwards so um, here it goes and it's perfect oh. <laughs> oh that makes me so happy for a longer stretch such as this uh, if possible i just delete one section at a time because i i find that makes it a little easier and zero percent perfect then we can delete this section and hopefully we can achieve uh another zero percent so there's there's a uh 0.1 percent incline uh, decline sorry but that's fine it's not gonna be noticeable uh so yeah i'm just gonna go one section at a time uh, and I'll po possibly have to do a little terraforming here and there if there's uh, if there's some areas that aren't where I where I didn't really manage to terraform it um, smoothly, but we'll see. Now, before I actually let the water in here to fill it up and create a proper uh, port, I'm going to map out some of the roads that connect further inland because I find that when we are actually already adding water, then it makes it a little more complex to add all these roads. And I'm just going to check again uh, our big friend here where it's going to be located. So it's going to take up space alongside here. So the first street will be over here somewhere. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, I'm gonna map out roads, should make it easier uh, when we actually let in the water. Right, so that gives us 
least the basic road layout we can we can start working with uh, next step for me is going to be upgrading these uh, wider roads to alley or at least uh, the key roads because i i prefer the look of these narrow alleys uh, as keys uh, and it also makes the, um, the the bends the curves here a little tighter because i, I do feel this looks a little weird uh, ideally we would have a very you know we would have a uh, like a, a 90 degree very strict bend here but it does turn into a curve unfortunately uh, but you can sort of alleviate it by upgrading to these alleys and i'll show what i mean you see the curvature here it's uh it's much tighter uh than over here so i'm gonna go through and and upgrade to these because i do feel that it's a it's just an overall better look Starting to be pretty happy with how this is turning out. Of course, the big joker is how is the water actually going to react with this uh, this change? Because this is a pretty pretty sizable change to like the uh, like natural geography, and I don't know how the the river is going to react to having to populate such a, a large area here with water. So I'm going to take it very very slow and just going to let water in through these two small openings let the simulation run for a bit and we're gonna see how it how it all pans out before doing this i always recommend save as much as possible because the water physics can be pretty hard to work with So the water level has started to settle a bit, but uh, I also kind of had to cheat a bit here because otherwise it seemed like it would take years and don't really have that much time. I'm going to start placing some of the, the main, um, I guess, focal points of the port now. And the first one is, of course, the, uh, the cargo port. And I might actually place two or at least attempt to place two, but I'm pretty sure I'll need to demolish all of this to achieve that because uh, as we saw earlier, it is a really, really big asset. Uh, so let's just grab the cargo harbor here. We've got the, the first one, so to speak. Um, and it's just gonna need a little alignment out here. And I am assuming that the main issue is probably this piece of land here making us unable to align it perfectly and it was so let's just bring it in real close to this road and i'll just place it here oh huge city look at me anyways i'm uh, gonna add a uh, a medium road as well and then i'm hopeful that i can enable snapping and place an additional um cargo port right next to this one and i can which is fantastic. Let's just see how well the alignment is actually going to work. Ah, oh, it's perfect. I think this looks uh, a lot better. Obviously, it's much bigger and it's much more expensive as well. So it's going to be interesting to see if this will uh, bankrupt us. But it's going to be the nicest looking bankrupt city then. And I can live with that. But I think something that would also be really cool is that if we get a ton of railway in here. Industrial rail, uh, freight rail. Uh, would really add to the look and also the functionality because I don't actually have a cargo rail uh, terminal yet. Uh, so I think we're gonna we're gonna grab that and maybe place it somewhere down here in like the southern part of the port, uh, something like this. And oh wait, it's ang ah it's angled the other way. Hmm. So I think to achieve that. I'm just gonna change uh, a few things here. I'm going to create a road here and then hopefully I can easily flip it. As such, there we go. Then I can bring the uh, the, the railways uh, alongside the port, create some cool designs where it looks like we've got multiple rail connections to some of the industrial facilities we'll have here. And then additionally, we can actually upgrade the cargo harbor with a uh, railway connection as such, uh, so that we can actually bring in some rail directly into the cargo harbor. And of course, all this is going to add uh, immensely to the complexity of the infrastructure uh, when we are done here. But 
but I mean, that's a lot of fun, right? Or that's at least a part of the fun for me. Uh, so I think I'll need to do a little more terraforming. I'll need to do a lot of railway construction. Uh, I'll need to bring in the interstate as well. So there's a lot of things to get started on here, potentially an additional outside railway connection, but I'm also gonna connect the main railway connection up to this area. So uh, lots of things to get going with now.
Oh man, I mean, I had big plans, but this is really turning into quite a port. Let's uh, grab our district tool and turn it into a, a fully fledged district. Uh, and I guess, I guess this should actually be named uh, Port of Riverview, right? Uh, but it, that does give us a bit of an issue because we've already got an area named just that. So I'm going to have to ask you guys for some input on what we're actually going to call the inner city uh, harbor, the inner harbor, basically. So I'm going to rename this Port of Riverview because I really think that's going to be fitting. We're going to have... A ton of activity out here and it's it's really a proper a proper port um, but it leaves us with a bit of an issue down here because we do have this old inner harbor here that i'm going to have to rename uh, so if you're a bit nerdy about names of areas and maybe a backstory or two the comment section is all yours. I'll try to find some of your cooler suggestions and uh, and pick one of them. Uh, and I mean nerdy in, in the best way possible, of course. But this is all up for discussion. Uh, so your suggestions will go here. Uh, let me know in the comments. Anyways, back to the Port of Riverview. The next step, of course, is just to zone the whole thing up. And I'll just... I'm going to zone everything, then I'm going to implement some parking lots here and there, and maybe a few paths and stuff like that. Uh, not too detailed, uh, and then we're going to let it grow and see just how many jobs we'll be able to uh, to spawn out here. I'm probably going to mix in some office as well, just to kind of uh, represent some uh, more modern developments, some more high-tech industries, because if we only zone industries, unfortunately, we do get quite a bit of chimneys, which I don't think look all that great, but the uh, Let's get zoning. And as I've done before, I'm going to come in here with the uh, pavement path and just add some simple paths. Not for decorative purposes, but to actually make the zoning uh, a little better. Because I don't want to zone stuff alongside the main road here since it's pretty much all covered by interstate. I'd rather that the uh, buildings face um, the, the key here. And I'm going to do the very same thing uh, here actually. So if I just grab this uh, and move this path south, then that is going to enable me to uh, probably probably zone uh, alongside the, the key instead. I'm going to do that uh, a few places if I... If I spot something similar, uh, we've sort of got the same situation over here. I don't want um, jobs to face Fawn Street directly. So I'll be implementing a very simple path to just cut through the area because that's, of course, going to ensure that that we don't have that issue. Which reminds me, I'm going to upgrade this to the, let's see, the four lane divided road. Uh, and then I'm going to add some... Um, some planters and trees in the center here so that we can hopefully get some really nice big trees after a little while. Just gonna upgrade the uh, median here so that it's thick and so that we can plant trees uh, because I don't want parking here either. There are mainly just arterial roads meant to serve the port with, uh, with industrial activity uh, more so than than anything else really so they're not supposed to be super accessible or have lots of zone stuff next to them as we discussed gonna come in with a bit of office zoning route just to kind of break up the smokestacks and the monotony of all the uh, of all the dirty industry that we're likely to see here so i'm hoping that's gonna provide an all right effect and that the the offices that do spawn I'll blend in rather rather well with the um, with the uh, surrounding industry. Usually, it, it works out quite all right. And as I mentioned, the the final step is just to sprinkle in some uh, some some surface parking throughout. Before we hit play, we have to establish a cargo ship route, uh, which is uh, rather simple. We just grab this tool and we locate our outside connection out here because I've already created a narrow seaway. That's, I mean, maybe there would be room for a medium seaway. Can we actually upgrade? Okay, so you, we, we could upgrade the segments, but I, I don't think... 
I don't think that's necessary. I think this is fine. So we'll just create our new route. We can add some waypoints route, but it, it doesn't really mean anything because there's only one route they can really, really take. Um, but it's uh, interesting nonetheless. And I think we'll get... We're going to try and get a ship all the way in here. And then just move it out here. And I don't know if we can... Can we create a new route actually? Oh, we can. That's pretty nice. I'm going to create one here as well. And maybe we should just create all four... And, I mean, that's probably going to give us the best chance of seeing a lot of activity here. So, um, yeah, we've got, we, uh, this is the, the only remaining one. And there we go. Nothing uh, left to do, hopefully. <laughs> I say that, but it's uh, kind of nervous, actually. But to, to hit play and see just how much stuff will actually move in here. We, we do have pretty high industrial and office demand, but... It's hard to see how high actually because demand is met immediately upon uh, zoning tiles being being up occupied by development in Sisganos 2. So it's gonna fall pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, gonna hit play and see how it all plays out. <laughs> oh, on such a nice fine line. A beauty in action. <laughs> All right, hopefully with time there's gonna be a bit more randomness in their, I don't know, spawn times or whatever. So that it looks a little less orchestrated because this looks kind of weird. Uh, but anyways, um, stuff is really moving in and my best guess is that at the moment only about maybe 60% of all the available lots uh, are uh, beginning to develop so hopefully we'll see quite a few jobs out here oh we've actually unlocked a new signature building a chemical plant all right uh, i assume that is because we reached some kind of milestone on the industry so we reached a certain amount of just uh, industrial buildings which unlocks the chemical plant and what a Oh, it's a cool looking asset. We need to make room for that, right? We definitely need to make room for that somewhere out here. Can we just... Is there anywhere where I can remove a road and then we've got room? It would have to be here, I, I assume. I think I want to place it over here. Very close to like the southwestern corner of the port so i'm just going to remove fawn street and i'll probably have to remove this parking lot as well yoink oh looks pretty cool um plus one percent industrial efficiency city wide okay that's pretty impressive as well uh, it gives us a little more room for zoning uh, an additional office building here just to kind of fill in the empty space. And I just noticed that we are reaching 10,000 cells worth of industrial manufacturing buildings, which would unlock the oil refinery if we also unlock the technical university. And I don't actually have a university here in Riverview yet, which we should probably be getting soon. So, should we go the technical university route to get the oil refinery? Hmm. Let me know in the comments. Man, all this new activity here really makes Riverview feel very, very big. Look at the distance to downtown Riverview and East Riverview in particular. And then a ton of container activity out here. We've got, I've seen lots of cargo rail pass through as well. There's not anything right now, but I've seen quite a bit of it. Very cool stuff indeed. Anyways, we discussed in the very beginning that it would be fun to try and rezone some of the... Well, it's not part of Riverview anymore and what it's going to be called is all up to you guys. But basically rezone some of this to more modern developments, some offices, some, uh, some condo towers. So I think I'm going to try that. Uh, but at the same time, of course, acknowledging that... There's quite a bit of noise pollution here, so yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting for sure. 
and I gotta find the right spot as well. Maybe starting out here on alongside Dean Lane is a good spot to start. So we'll just remove all the industry that was here before in this uh, this little cluster basically. And then instead we're gonna see if we can get some high density stuff to grow. And hopefully avoid too much asset repetition. Which is going to require, and, and also avoid two tall towers. So it's going to require me to use a variety of different uh, zoning types. Although I could actually go for like um like a row of high rises. That would actually be kind of interesting, I think. Something like that. And then we'll see if I can actually grow an office building here with that type of zoning. And then for a European, maybe we can go for a bit of a maybe two at this this size here and then see if we can squeeze in an additional office building here and maybe just some small offices as well modern developments i don't know we're gonna try it see how it pans out I'm also going to rezone some of the more smoky and dirty industrial stuff out here to offices instead so that I can just sort of slowly but surely weed out some of the many smokestacks here because we are very close to downtown and if we're gonna showcase an inner harbor that is you know going through a transformation then at least I want uh, the more dirty industry to, uh, to, to start moving out so that we can clean this area up a bit. So interestingly, it really seems that the residential developments here uh, won't grow. And I'm assuming it's because of ground pollution, uh, basically. If we check, it's rather high here. All the office stuff uh, is willing to, gr to grow. So I guess until the ground pollution is actually cleaned up, I'm going to try and repurpose this to like a uh, modern office uh, uh, office area just by uh, zoning these uh, down a bit and then hopefully I'll have what looks like a you know major uh, single plant development here uh, but we'll we'll see just how this turns out and how it ends up looking that's kind of what I'm going for at least uh, so let's just see I'm just gonna add in a few paths because why not it's all the detailing I have so but I use it let's see yeah, as expected, this will grow. So maybe it's just an office, a uh, modern office park until the ground pollution really clears up and we can start adding some uh, residential stuff in here. And this is the final result, which I uh, guess it's all right without being super fancy. Now, of course, I actually need to establish a cargo railway route for this thing to actually work properly. So... Um, Let's see, I assume I just have to yeah, connect to the outside connection and complete the route. Great. Can I grab this outside connection as well? To start a new route. Moving all the way down here. Or how does this work? Click and then go back. Complete. All right. And the cargo train is en route and just look at the amount of activity we are seeing here tons of exports and imports going in and as summer has turned to fall and we're starting to see some of the beautiful uh, fall flora colors here i think it's time we wrap up this episode this has been so much fun to build and i'm quite happy with the the outcome it's not the most detailed area we've built that's for sure but for now it really it really does what it needs to do. It adds a ton of jobs to the metro area. It creates the proper ports that some of you guys have really been asking for. And we've got lots of really um, complex infrastructure weaving in and out here, which is always so much fun to create in this game. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll do my best to shoot some nice cinematics of these final areas. Uh, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.